Hello everyone, Ajon here, another Steel Division Normandy 44 replay. Spawn the south side as the dual airborne one British glider unit, the 6th airborne Dext, and the 101st airborne we have AEF 630. The I or 6. Looks like the British player is over here, United States player is over here. And we got more United States across the center of the map. So on the north side, as the Axis player, we have 17th SS Panzer Grenadier, which he will be on the right side. Time to get good. And his ally, yes, I know, I mispronounced your name, Nicola. Nicola. I say Cola. Last, I think the last time I said it was Cola, Nicola. Because everything's better when related to food, right? Right? I love food. As the, I should probably mention, he's also the 716th Infantry. We've got Nebworth for Barrage here. Very, very premature. However, this flame can be a bit problematic because there's flame on the road. It can actually destroy the transport, if not even as well burn the infantry alive. We've got various infantry here. Something to note here, the, Panzer, the 716th Infantry has the 100 income. SS Panzer Grenadier. Over here, 100 income, 101st, and 75, no, 70 income down here, 70, 100, 75. Meaning, most likely this flank will be pushed forward because he has more income. This flank will be pushed forward here because of more income. We got a large number of Pathfinders here. We only got some basic Ostroop in here. We also got, ooh, a Mosquito Pathfinder. Mosquito Pathfinder is an excellent incendiary bomber to burn these guys alive. Burn, burn. Sorry. Burn. There we go. Hopefully that's out of my system, but I love the Mosquito Pathfinder. It's one, I would say, probably one of the strongest aircraft in the game, other than the HS-129. Or the French smoke aircraft. <laughs> I honestly have never really been seen seen that used. Actually, actually, the Storch, the reconnaissance aircraft, is hardly ever used. Let alone that, we do got the Mosquito Pathfinder coming on in for a strafing round as well. Not uh, in Winchester Evac. We'll go ahead and provide very good support. And he, seeing how he has less income, gaining quite a bit of ground here is actually quite important. Plus one in uh, tickets in favor of the Allied players. Which will can help go a long way, assuming they maintain it. We got some stormtroopers here, various other units. A lot of stormtroopers, actually. These stormtroopers do, of course, have the Panzer Faust. More reinforcing infantry here. A Willie's M8, or well, MB, not M8. We got Panzer Lorraine. Note the Panzer Lorraine is French. I have something I found out recently. A F there, you can see that name. It means it is Frenchy, captured French unit. We got some M22s now moving on forward. We also got a 50 here. We'll suppress these stops troop, no problem. We'll probably wipe them out. These Panzer Grenadiers, they do not have Panzer Fouls, but I actually prefer this variant. It makes them much cheaper. And you only really. Panzer Fouls, you really don't often use them against vehicles. So. And it makes a really up the price. This uh, Panzer Lorraine is getting hit by the Mosquito. The Mosquito can can take it out. However, it, it does. It, it is very resilient. Even though it is, it is it is open top, it can be taken out by aircraft. The uh, longer the stays loitering, the longer it will take for it to rearm the next time for an incendiary bomber. Do you got some uh, AA coming on in? And we do also have some B2s now moving forward. B2s are a French red heavy, uh, heavier tank. No, it was heavy at the time before they got captured. It has the mortar pestle in front as well. I think that is the name of that frontal weapon. But I'm not exactly sure how, what else to call it. We got some Panzer Grenadiers to move forward. We do got the Pack 38 here. Pack 38 can easily penetrate the frontal armor of the M22 at this range. Looks like this, uh, I think there's a PA team it did get cleaned up. We do got the airborne paras moving on forward. The airborne paras, the the British variant, the United Kingdom forces, 
do, of course, have four SMGs, so they're excellent at a close range. We got some reinforcing Ostruppen. They do, of course, have the LMG in comparison to the Estrostruppen, which do not. We do got some uh, hot kisses now moving forward as well. Over here, we do got a lot of indirect fire. Nope, it's just a Nebwar for Barrage that makes it look like a lot, but it is a heavy, very heavy artillery piece. We'll pin down these units, preventing them from moving forward. Field control is still in favor of the allied players. And looks like this Mosquito Pathfinder will finally be forced back. We do got another B6 move forward. So there's two, not B6, uh, B2s. I always, I've been getting that confused with the L6, which has an auto cannon. However, there is a Tetrarch Little John here. It does, of course, have a 14 arm penetration main cannon. However, the max range is 800 meters, not the extended or state of 1,000 meters. So it is not as good as long range. So by default, the B2 is more slow to win out. At a uh, 200 meters range, it has much, it has, you can make use of as much excellent armor and has the range advantage. And overall, at max range, it has plus four, but at engagement range from both sides, it'll have arm, effective arm penetration of nine. So it will be down, so have a plus five. It will be down, actually at that range, down six. So it will technically at that range will be lesser, but with a higher, ac with the same accuracy, I would still say the B2 is more slow than went out because of that additional 200 range. We got a very grouped up force here. These was never very warfare has reloaded. It can get a very good barrage off. We do got two pack howitzers here, which is a good amount of indirect fire. These are my favorite indirect fire pieces in the game. Battle phase A, 2,000 meter range, very good unit in my opinion. Oh, I do like those uh, multiple mortar tube units and multiple rocket tube. You uh, know, use what the 21st uh, answer. Do like those as well. We do got some fusiliers that are being forced back. The fusiliers do have two SMGs, but against airborne paras with four SMGs, they're screwed at this range. How the Panzer is getting some very close range shots on to hit these squads. The Panzer Elf, Panzer 35 making some shots in. We do got some reinforcing units. Hopefully, it's a stormtrooper. Never for Barrage coming on in, doing massive amount of suppression damage. But these Panzer Grenadiers will be forced back. There's still a Stormtrooper. They do, of course, have Panzer Files, so they can still fight the, the tanks. Reinforcing units are now making their way forward. Tetrarch Little John hasn't really done all too much. Has fired some NG rounds. They haven't used its main gun. It looks like I think Neb yeah, these guys are just so pinned down from Neb War for Barrage. Stormtroopers are now in ra range of these airborne rifles, but the airborne rifles have just have way too many men for them to deal with. Plus, it's also supporting the nearby units. At Colors, they could try I'm the counter barrage Neb War for. They do have longer range. It's out of range at the moment. So he, and if you can take out that, he will be in a much better position. Looks like these Pathfinders have thrown out their smoke grenades. Very nice. I like seeing those smoke grenades being used up. This PA team is perhaps trying to eye hitting this B2. Tetrarch is. Two Tetrarchs are on the field. Two Tetrarch Little Johns. As Lorraine must be getting some very good hits here. Actually, no, there's a field gun here doing some very good uh, suppression work. More and more reinforcing infantry. I think there's a huge wave of Ostruppen being uh, the 716th infantry. He has access to various cheap infantry units. Stormtroopers and pa Panzer Grenadiers are moving forward. Feel the tickets are still in favor of the allied players, and the pack colleges are doing some very good suppression work. Never Warfare needs to get some good barrages in. Maybe he gets another one.
Circle Little Johns haven't done all too much. Oh, this one got taken out by this B2, I believe. It's using use of arm penetration and now engaging the other one. So yeah, using its max range advantage, takes out one of the Little Johns. And also that Mortar Pestle will provide a decent amount of suppression. Oh, there goes the other one. Very nice. We do got another Mosquito Pathfinder run. Right here will be ideal. I think the bombs are heading there. No, they're hitting the Fusiliers. Two more Austrian now out on the field. Another in this field gun is currently hitting the Chaffee, which the Chaffee will be forced back. Looks like there's a huge number of airborne units now moving forward. There's nothing huge for defend. There is a Pack 40, which does have access to 18 rounds, which makes it pretty effective versus them. The Mosquito Pathfinder will be forced back forward to the eight, probably to this uh, Flak Irving, slow, but it did not prevent the bombing, of course. You got a P-51D out. The P-51D does have 650 caliber machine guns, so he may be eyeing for some loitering support. I think he may have hit this IG-88, but there is now some few, uh, pack howitzer fire upon it. As Lorraine lining up some shots. We got a large number of Panzer Grenadiers here. It looks like the Panzer Grenadier unit is holding the lining will get superior income. Battle Phase B has been initiated for about two minutes now. Now the economies are starting to be leveled out between the aggressive and not so aggressive. In fact, the not so aggressive ones in the beginning of Battle Phase A now has substantial income and not even lead. So now this flank will be more likely to be pushed forward while this flank could be more likely to be pushed back. We got attack beacon here. I think the Neville Warfare is ready to fire so he can do some very good amount of work there. Over here, Armor 5 is not deployed out but it is in range of a pack 37, 47 millimeter. More and more artillery pieces coming forward. This is a lot of artillery. We need to see more counter artillery uh, fire. Pack are have not been fine against any other artillery pieces. There is a, a supply jeep, but that will run out of ammo quickly. And still got these B2s in the air. These B2s will wreak havoc against any infantry units, such as the airborne composition force. And the Panzer Grenadier unit can bring in some more heavier assets. We also got some Cromwell, two Cromwell fires now move out. Most of this Pack 37 is pinned down to the one member, so mostly it will be taken out. Do got this hush kiss doing quite a bit of suppression, actually. It may be taken out by this Cromo. The Cromo did in fact take out the AT gun. That is very nice and very important. Now he has no fear of reprisal from any target out on the field. Though he has received a huge amount of suppression damage, but the other Cromo takes out the Panzer 35. Got some wave of reinforcing infantry units. Panzer Grenadiers still hold this little town center here. And with two LMGs, they are very effective at holding the line. And he's already making the way forward. There, there's these airborne paras, however. But these bundle grenades can wreak havoc against these infantry units. Because you don't need much to throw a gigantic ass grenade. You don't need much veteran so you don't need lots of SMGs. You just need to throw giant ass grenades at your opponent. Next grenade is out. Will soon be out, which will help destroy. That unit actually surrenders. This grenade is now out, wipes out that unit. Now this force is cleared out by using these cheap pioneers over these expensive para airborne paras. And they both still have additional bundle grenades. Pioneers are excellent garrison clearing and forest clearing tools. Same thing with uh, pioneers and Sturm pioneers and assault engineers. We got a command steward here as well as some various reinforcing infantry units. We got still this never warfare. We do got a pack 43 now moving for the front line as well as some reinforcing infantry. A lot of reinforcing infantry and a mass fallback from these units. We do got to, the officer unit is still not in a fallback state. If you get that to a fallback state, these units will start surrendering. The Pathfinder is has recovered. It is a storm it is a storm pioneer squad. He will force surrender here. Then this one will surrender. Then this one will surrender. Three, two, one. Soon, anyways. 
This Panic Grenadier finds this AT gun, will take it out. We do got a huge reinforcing wave infantry, but he's lost a severe amount of ground. He needs to establish the front line here quickly. We got multiple Cromwells here. Still the same two. As well as supporting air landing. Air landing, of course, at the border. Mostly uh, Bren as well as a Piet. But they're only seven men. So they're not all too effective, but they're much cheaper. They're Battle Phase B. Don't have any stars of registry as well. As there's three Panzer Lorraine fires. There's still two Ban B2s out. This is a fresh one. One of them has, in fact, gone down. There's also Marauder 1 anti tank. However, this uh, Mosquito Pathfinder is going to do a massive uh, lane run, which will burn, start burning these uh, units out of the forest. Armor Fires are going to be engaging these units as well. MG34 will get starting to get hit. You will. Oh, big suppression. There may be this, this uh, heavy field gun. This is a field gun, not an artillery piece. A thousand meter range is a heavy field gun. Over here, it may have been the Neville Warfare is currently reloading, so massive barrage here by the Neville Warfare. This unit is stuck in the flames, so he needs to retreat that back so out so it doesn't get burned to death. So the B2 over here will get forced back, but there's enough AA here to help ward away any additional strikes. There goes the Cromwell. The other one goes already down to the Marauder. Currently has fired two arm piercing shots, takes them both out. Very lucky. There's still the Humber Mark III off the auto cannon, but that will be quickly killed off by this Marauder. Not Marauder, but Martyr. Not Martyr, but Martyr. I always get those names mixed up. Marauder, Martyr, and Martyr. All the same to me, pretty much. All involving death. You got a uh, Sherman DD fighting as a Panzer IV. The Panzer IV does, of course, have two stars of vegetacy, and we'll take out the Sherman tank there. This unit is still pinned down for that Nebelwerfer barrage. And there is, in fact, another Nebelwerfer, so there's going to be a lot of indirect fire. Across the Axis board, we've got like three or four Panzer Lorraines, two Nebelwerfers, heavy field guns, mortar team. Versus just two pack howitzers. Oh, there was a pack howitzer here, but just got wiped out. There goes that enemy aircraft. Oh, Axis aircraft. Another Never Warfare barrage coming on in. These units haven't even covered from their original suppression. Now, this is going to be annihilating. We'll take out one infantry unit entirely. You got these pioneers there pinned down to the recon units. It may, in fact, force and surrender, but they're currently the whole fire safe. There goes that M20. Not big surprise. Off Stroop and moving will be receiving quite a bit of fire from the air landing, but there is a B2 of the mortar pestle as well as the Hotchkiss suppressing these units. Also got Jeep Vickers here with two stars eventually doing the same amount of work, I guess. We do got a Warfarman Hotchkiss, which do of course have access to four big bombs at 100 AOE of 104 meters. And Sephora is still here. Nothing really here to contest it, though there is some bazooka fire if it gets too close. Looks like we've got some smoke coming on in from the pack halters as well as some um, regular barrages. 17 pounder is moving forward. Perhaps I to hit these uh, tank units. It would be excellent versus those. Field control is currently 50-50. Minor victory in 25 minutes for the Allies. Ladder leader will get pinned down. There's a huge amount of uh, pioneers here. Which it shows you, while you may not have the best infantry units, a cheap spam is incredibly effective. Unless you get hit by a rocket artillery or bombing runs, which reminds me, we haven't seen we've seen the mosquito pathfinders doing all too all doing very good. What about some B twenty six marauder marauders, not martyrs, but marauders? There is this pack forty three. It probably is spotted spotted by this pathfinder unit. Also a Browning here. 
do got a uh, typhoon coming in for a couple bombs it has two 15 he bombs did get two units very there very nice and we'll force a fall back there we do got the panzer Lorraine suppressing this group there's nothing much really here to defend there is a lot of reinforcing units this is exactly what he needs but you can see based on the map there's a lot more access units out cheap spam is can be quite effective Panzer IV will pin down both these M1 AT guns. That's actually quite important. Now they're just going to be slowly picked away. Do got an M8 Scott here. Good Scott! Fire! As well as a Greyhound. But he really needs something to take on that tank. The Greyhound does not have a strong enough uh, weapon. Tracks broken on the, t on the command unit. It doesn't use tracks. It has wheels. Oh well. Going back. But can't fall back. It has four flat tires. More like a more likely a broken axle for that unit in order it to be immobile. Looks like this um, team pounder has made itself known. It does destroy that hotch kiss there, but now there's going to be a lot of Panzer Lorraine fire upon it as well as this uh, Warferman hotch kiss. Does get pinned down there. Receives a nice hit there as. Also, we do got another Mosquito Pathfinder bombing run coming on in. Ooh, that 17 pounder is almost dead. I think the next shot's yet yeah, there. Dead. And we got some more units coming forward. One of them carried by heavy artillery, by heavy transport. This may be, in fact, a 4,000 meter range artillery piece, whatever that's called. Do you got another Pack Howie here? Has used up all its smoke, but this line needs some tanks. Wait a second. That was not a 4,000 meter range artillery piece. That was, in fact, the Nebel War for 42. These things have the biggest bombs, I think, in the game. Even bigger than most aircraft. In fact, I think all bombers. So that is a massive artillery piece. We do got another Nebel War for Barrage. Does hit, splash his own Pioneer squad a bit. So he may need to force the fall that now over here we still got a very good defensive line by the axis players we do got a plus one in favor of axis and that's right they will win the game in 22 minutes pioneers here there do have the bundle grenades but however i think they're just out of range Oh, we do got a, the War for Men barrage coming on in. We'll be doing some very big bombs. Rolls a bunch of misses, however. It's one model, nothing much. We got a huge wave of reinforcements here, but there's enough heavy field guns to help dissuade any assault. And soften up. And we do got a very good barrage here. We'll hit force back on the. Pack Howie's. The other Pack Howie. No, those are the Jeep that was. Oh, the Jeep's still here. With one bullet left. Oh, we do. Yeah, we do have, in fact, the very long range artillery piece. So we do have a good amount of indirect uh, counter artillery for the Axis players. Well, the Allied players do not have all much, many units to the left. Battle Phase C has been initiated for about five. Well, about four minutes now. At this rate, the Axis players are going to win out. You got a P47 rocket run coming on in, doing very good amount of suppression well, in uh, HE damage to that unit. I think it will be another run to be taken out. You can see here, it's actually a, a bit of damage. It's on the model. It goes another 17 pounder as well as the airborne sniper getting mortared to death. Uh, nothing much a sniper can do versus a tank. And I just think this game is in the Axis players' bags. I mean, look how many units they have left versus the allies. 
They also have a substantially more amount of artillery. Oh, it looks like the these munitions trucks have picked up some artillery pieces. I'm not exactly sure what they're carrying. Uh, apparently this one's carrying Neville War for 41. That's thing, something people don't realize. Ammo vehicles can actually pick up units. So if you want to reposition something after that doesn't have no longer as a transport, use a supply truck. You got some flamethrower thrower teams, but these guys will just get ripped apart. They're two-man squads. I don't really rely. I think they're reliable for only two members. They really want to make them more effective. Just give them a second flamethrower. Even then, they still get picked off from really far away. These grenadiers only have one LMG. They're not all too effective. Oh, these are not Panzer Grenadiers. They're just regular Grenadiers. Sheep figures will actually maybe take it out. Yes, it does, because it has zero armor. But Pioneers do have a TNT charge. If you were to run forward past that one member can't fill the charge. Incendiary bombing run coming on in. Rolls a huge miss. Not a whole lot of air superiority by the Axis players. In fact, you only saw that one enemy 109 that got splashed down. You got a Flak 88 now coming on forward. Heavy AAP slash anti tank. You got time on target here, so you won't be able to hit much, though this uh, heavy field gun may run in the circle, which would be a bit problematic. It is a 203 millimeter colon. Overall, I think the Axis players just had this game in the bag. I'll go ahead and just fast forward a little bit. Nothing too extravagant is happening. You do got the barrage coming on in. We'll do some bit of suppression damage, but not all too much. Counter artillery is coming in this area. One of the pack colleges is down to two members. Very vulnerable. Airborne sniper being deployed, but that won't do all too much. You got Challenger here, so we do have a heavier tank out. It is a Chromo, a 17 pounder. Another call in over here. We we'll do, did do quite a bit of a good amount of suppression. And the heavy field gun was going to pin down by the pack, all the pack howitzer shots. But we do got a Stug now engaging, as well as counter artillery onto the area. We got a rocket run coming on in. This Stug 4 is very close to death. Will be forced back by the pack howitzer shot. But there goes the one, the pack howitzers. This one is getting picked apart as well. This one's down to one member. So the access, the allied line is really going down. We do got the challenger now engaging over here. Number of machine gun carriers, machine gun jeep man carrier is now moving forward. We'll suppress a number of units, but there is a pack 37 engaging them. Reinforcing infantry squads coming down the center of the map. There's nothing really much here to defend. There is a Scott, but the Panzer 35 can engage that. Over here, we do got some Pioneers that are currently pinned down. We do got more indirect fire coming in. Another war for coming forward may wipe out that uh, pack howitzer. There you go. The last of the pack howitzers are now down. We got a couple Sherman tanks now moving on forward. Going ahead and just return back to normal pace. These heavy field guns are doing a great amount of work pushing these units back. You got a Wolverine out as well. These heavy field guns may be uh, forced to fall back soon. Oh, it's this one. Yeah, it gets pinned down before firing off this next shot and probably will get killed off. You got a Italian unit coming forward. Does, of course, have access to two Italian submachine guns. The Breda's 39 as well as the MG-34 light machine gun. And some Panzerfaust. You got a large medium armor assault, but these Stugs are very problematic. This has 14 armor penetration as well as 12 armor. Sherman tanks don't have squat upon it. Wolverines are more slotted to lose out against it, but the Stug only has a range of 1,000 meters, not the extended 
1,200 meters range. So this Wolverine can outrange it. Does receive a bounce there. 17 pounder has been deployed here, has been spotted by the Axis players. So he's going to be eyeing to destroy it with a lot of indirect fire, fire perhaps. We do got a Ju87 now coming on forward. Ju87 does, of course, have nine arm penetration across two cannons. It will probably make short work of this M10. It has open top turret, so it's very vulnerable to any aircraft. Here comes the strafing run. What the first shot does to, in fact, take it out. It is not enough. Uh, but we do have air sporty fighters now coming on forward. Try to is now initiate the fallback procedures. Will get splashed down. Nearly crashes down on its own units. But we do got some Nebworfers coming for some barrages here. This is some big bombs. Looks like this Carmel is now moving forward. The Challenger is still live over here. But there's now a Flak 88 covering its general sector. Each wave of reinforcements coming in. But more and more cheap infantry. And you still can see there's a massive amount of Axis forces here. Campaign level numbers versus your campaign numbers. We got two HS1, no, HS129 and JU87 now coming forward. The HS129 does have, of course, have excellent arm penetration at. This is actually B1, so it only has 9 arm penetration, never mind. The B3 has 16 arm penetration. We'll take out that Challenger. That's actually quite crucial. That is their heaviest asset on the field. We got a rocket run coming on in. We only gives off a pair of rockets. We'll pin down the units. We won't take anything out. Bombs coming on in. We'll wipe out the seven man squad. HS129 now being forced to fall back. Typhoon will get splashed down by this Vet Vetra C2 ME19. This one may in fact get go down as well. It's currently smoking, but he does not engage. I do believe this is the last time on target. All the Sherman tanks is the Wolverine is over here is dead. The Stug is very problematic. Do you got an 18th gun here? But at max range, he won't be able to penetrate the frontal armor. It will, however, cause some suppression for what it's worth. These reinforcing infantry units are just going to get wiped out. Currently, the Axis players have plus two economy. They have subs sustained a substantial amount of tickets. They're going to just initiate a fast forward. There's nothing much the allies have left. They're just being a bit stubborn and not surrendering. At this rate, they have nothing. If their opponents have a so sizable indirect fire, sizable ground forces, well, they have pretty much nothing. In fact, I think they're starting out composition has more. We do got a regular mosquito here with four smaller bombs. There's a good amount of suppression there. And but it gets, does get splashed on by this veteran C2 unit. This unit will be forced back off by the indirect fire. The Flak 88 did not take it out in that, that last shot. Over here, we do got some very restricted run, but there's enough AA in the air to force it back. We got a substantial amount of map control you know, obtained by this Panzer 35. Never for coming in for another barrage on the Scott. And we got the Wolverine trying to engage what it can. It does have HE rounds and also a Pinto mount primarily for AT infantry. But it can't go any forward. There's stormtroopers here, There's, which means Panzerfaust. Very good barrage there. We'll wipe out a uh, Pioneer unit, if not two. Wasn't really paying attention there. We do got a rocket run coming on in. We'll manage to get off all of its rockets here, but there's still air sporty fire here. And we do got multiple uh, targets for this air supporty fire, but he is a little bit outgunned. He will be lining up a shot. Then, though, he forces the retreat back for some odd reason. He could splash down that aircraft, no problem. That was a mosquito. You don't want that to get, escape. Reinforcing infantry starting to move on forward. And we got the HS129. I don't know that's J87 moving forward. We'll be forced to fall back. Here's the HS129. One more rocket runs coming on in. But nothing for a substantial amount of fuel control. We've got reinforcing infantry. However, the N10 will be overwhelmed as well as the Sherman take by the Stug. The Stug just has superior armor. The second Stug is now moving on forward. There goes a the Wolverine. The Sherman tank is next. We do got the glorious Storch assault. All four Storches now out. Spotting, leading by example of how to spot stuff. 
as you can see here, he, his opponent has nothing left. He could just go ahead and send these units out. You got two forward operation, operate, uh, forward observation uh, post vehicles. You got more Nebel Warfare's Barrage getting some very good hits on these airborne rifles, forcing multiple of them down. At this rate, the Axis players will win in 45 seconds. One Storch is now out, but sort of baiting out that aircraft, really. I thought that Storch was going to go down by the air security fighter, but it's not. As the final seconds of the game closes out, just very well played by the Axis players, using a substantial amount of indirect fire against the blobs and tightly grouped units, and using their cheaper infantry to clear out to take on their more expensive ones cost-effectively, especially in the forest and the cities with the bundle grenades with the pioneers. This is, this is A. John saying thank you for watching and signing off.